Hey guys, and welcome back to Bible Fun with the Nuns. Today we are in Acts chapter 20, and we're just addressing our very fancy greenhouse since it's in our background now. Um, John's doing a science lab project. I don't really know what we're growing. We're growing something. The seeds have a name. Yeah. There's Henry and G Gerald. Gerald. Henry and Gerald. So you'll watch them Both grow over time. Definitely yes. spelled correctly. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. And John's out with friends. Jax, you start us out today. All right, so we start off this chapter. Paul is still traveling, and he gets on to Troas, and he keeps preaching and doing what he does best, which is sharing the gospel. So one day while he's preaching, he's preaching all day. They worship, they have church service, they eat lunch, and he preaches some more. And so Eutychus, he's this kid, and he falls asleep while sitting in the windowsill. And, During church. Mm -hmm, and he falls out. And, of the third floor, yeah. FYI. So these people must have been rich, but um, he falls out and he dies. If you fall asleep in church, you will die. That's what it means. Yeah. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> And Paul says, worry not, friends, for he <laughs> is British. <laughs> Paul sounds British today. British. Go Top on. of the morning to you, Eutychus. <laughs> Go on. All right. Ignore that. <laughs> anyway, um, he says, do not fear, for he is only sleeping. So he goes on and keeps preaching as if nothing happened. And the kid's parents take him home. And he brings him back to life. He's alive. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. By the way. <laughs> It's kind of a big deal. Uh-huh. And so this is where my takeaway comes from. So uh, when you spend enough time with a person, like say it's your best friend. Mommy, you're not all the way in it. We see half of your face. There we go. Um, you start to rub off on each other. So Paul, he's lived his whole life since uh, what happened in Damascus. And he has been... Um, Walking closely. Yeah, walking with closely with the Lord. Uh-huh. All right. So, he and God have gotten to be really close friends. And um, Paul straight up takes something out of Jesus's book. Yes, our dog is very enthusiastic about Acts. So, he straight up takes something out of Jesus's book and he says, Hey, don't worry. He's sleeping. Which we've seen Jesus do on numerous occasions when someone has died. And then he brings him back to life. So, the moral of the story, don't fall asleep in church. <laughs> There's probably a bigger moral there. Some but, more morals. All right, what you got, Mom? So, after that, after Paul brings Eutychus back to life, they go back upstairs, they eat again, who knows. And then Paul keeps teaching. I like what Terry Lee Cobble said. He says, Eutychus, you just got my first point. We still got two more points. We got to finish this out. And he preaches until the sun comes up. And then he gets up and travels some more. I'm thinking he's tired, but what I bet more people fell asleep. I'm going to protect Jeb from the okay. dog. Okay. <laughs> so then Paul goes back to Ephesus basically to love on them and to tell them goodbye. He tells them he probably won't see them again. He's not really sure what his future holds. He tells them that the Holy Spirit warns him every single place that he goes that he could be in danger. And so, Paul wants to leave them with some encouragement. And he tells them a couple of things. He says some amazing words in verse 24. Um, but he leaves them with a couple of pieces of advice <laughs> and encouragement. Um, and the first thing is to keep a close watch on what you believe, on what they believe. Because there will always, always be people in their lives who try to make them stray and try to lead them away from the Word of God. And I think that's applicable to them, and I think that's applicable to us. We can apply that to our own lives today. This is why it's so important for us to be in His Word every day, to know what God says about things, and to put that before the, the words that any other human can tell us. And then the second thing is He encourages them to be generous um, with their lives, just like He hopes that He has been an example of in His own ministry to them. And so now it's daddy's turn to take yeah, it away. I can see, like I'm reading this, and I'm watching the thread that's always been in the in the Bible. The same thread is continuing. So in this passage, Paul goes and he raises Eutychus from the dead. So Eutychus is a young man. 
Well, you go back to the Old Testament and you start to see how others did that too. There were other prophets in their ministry, like Paul, a preacher in his ministry, and they kind of do the same things. So Elijah raises a, raises a little boy from the dead. Uh, Elisha raises a little boy from the dead. Uh, now Paul is raising a guy from the dead. But they're all, it all comes back to Jesus. Like Jesus raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. Mm -hmm. You also watch through this, and Paul says, like in verse number 23, he said, The Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulations await me. But Paul is pushing and pushing and pushing to go to Jerusalem. He knows that he has to get to Jerusalem, but he knows when he gets there, he's going to be arrested, and it's, it's going to be bad. But he still goes there. Mm -hmm. Well, isn't that what Jesus did? His entire ministry led him. He knew the cross was waiting in Jerusalem. And yet Jesus, his whole life pushed that direction. And then the, then Paul tells these people, you know, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Well, isn't that what Jesus showed us at the cross where he died for us? He, he did it all. And so he gave it all. What if the goal of a disciple is to look as much like the master as possible? Mm. And we know that we're on the right track in serving Jesus if, if our lives start to look the way his life looked. Maybe we're bearing fruit. Maybe we're not raising the dead, but we're bearing fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. All of that's who Jesus was. And then the other piece to this, and this is it, Paul does this. You're going to see this phrase over and over in these last Acts chapters. It says he encouraged them with many words. Right there at the very beginning, that's, that's happening in these first couple of verses, verse 2, and he encouraged them with many words. Wherever Peter goes or Paul goes or the apostles go, they're encouraging all these people with words. Can I give you the challenge for today? I've never known anybody who suffered from getting too much encouragement, ever. So find somebody in your life today, you can encourage them in Jesus today. That's the goal for today. Let's do like these early apostles, let's, these early disciples. Let's be encouragers. All right? All right. We'll see you soon. See ya. Bye. Bye.